all cultures throughout history, food has intrigued and occupied us. But what defines a great food experience? And how can we take it even further? We aim to find out by exploring unconventional methods and innovations, as well as ancient techniques. This is Tasteology. So cows don't know anything about nutrition. They don't know what protein is. They don't know what sugars are. But pregnant cows will eat more high protein grasses, for example, than steers, because pregnant cows have a higher protein requirement. So I start to think, well, how does, a, how does a cow know that? I mean, a cow doesn't, might not even know it's pregnant, certainly doesn't know what protein is. How would they know to eat more alfalfa or clover? The way they do that is through flavor. They, they just eat what they find more delicious. So their palate is in tune with their body's needs. And I thought, is that happening with us? Is, is there some way that the flavor of the food that we like is related to what our bodies actually need? Whether we buy food at organic markets, pick it up at the gas station, or grow our own, the way ingredients are sourced affects what we put into our bodies. And as the variety of foods grow bigger, it's harder than ever to make a conscious choice. So is the solution to go back to our roots and pluck it from the ground? Or are additives the solution? Mark Schatzker, author and food journalist, is one of the leading experts when it comes to the connection between flavor and nutrition. He thinks the answer can be found in one of the world's most popular snacks. Henry, what, um, what's your favorite Halloween candy? My favorite Halloween candy would be like... Do you like the chips? You like Doritos though, don't you, Henry? I know you do. <laughs> I know you do. Everyone does. Do you? I think they taste good, yeah, of course, they, they work. They know what they're doing at Frito-Lay. So I called my book The Dorito Effect because the invention of Doritos tells us so much about what happened to food. And very simply, the very first Doritos bombed. They were just salted tortilla chips, ordinary tortilla chips. After the plain Doritos that didn't sell well, they launched taco flavored Doritos. And it was the taco flavoring that made Doritos delicious, that made a snack that no one wanted to eat become a snack that people literally could not resist. So just think about that for a sec. We added flavor chemicals. The nutrition of the Dorito didn't change, but the experience changed. And that is so important because it tells us the power of flavor to get us to do things, to, to literally to get us to eat. So that to me is the most profound change in our food system is flavor. And there's no better example of uh, a return to flavor the way nature intended than foraging. Because when things grow wild in the forest, they have not been altered in any way they haven't been bred at all. These are truly wild foods. When you eat a wild mushroom, you're really having the same flavor experience as, as a caveman who ate that exact mushroom. If you look down at your plate in any fine dining restaurant, you'll surely find small flowers, sorrel, or even spruce shoots in your food. As a contrast to today's artificially flavored foods, many chefs source ingredients straight from the forest. The roots of the modern foraging movement can be found deep in the woods just outside of Kyoto. At the two Michelin-starred Miyamaso, chefs Hisato and Sachiko Nakahigashi find all their ingredients in the wild. あの、
私の父親なんですけれども新しい形の懐石料理という料理のスタイルがありましてそのスタイルをもとにしたこの辺りの自然の中でとれた野草とかお魚とかあとは鹿とかイヌシとかいうお肉です。このミヤマソウっていうものを中心としてここから約1 0キロの範囲内で取れるものを、えー、中心として使ってます。狩猟採集っていう言葉とはちょっと違うんですね私たちがやっているのは、えー、その辺は私たちの言葉で言うと積み草という言葉になるんですねで、積み草っていうのはさっきもこうお話ししてたみたいに感謝をしながら、えー、ハンティングするというかはいっていう気持ちでこうやっている。So what we've done to chicken tells us so much about what we've done. To all of our food. Chicken is much cheaper than it used to be. It grows way faster, almost three times as fast as it used to, but it's also extremely bland. Chickens don't taste the way they used to, and they're less nutrient dense. Daddy, do you know what chickens eat? What's interesting, Henry, is that in, out in nature, a wild chicken. We'll eat lots of different things, but、uh, usually today when we keep them on farms, they only eat one thing, which is chicken feed, which is made from soybeans and corn. So we're going to visit my friend Bill Park, who's a farmer. And、um, what makes Bill special as a farmer is that he raises his animals outside.、Uh, most people think, well, don't all farms do that? And the truth is, the vast majority do not do that. So his chickens get to walk around the, the fields. Eating bugs and grasshoppers and sometimes snakes and a lot of leaves. And this influences the way the meat tastes. So his chickens taste completely different from a chicken in a supermarket. They have, they have lots of flavor. Daddy, why are they all going over there? Well, they're a little bit afraid of you, Henry, because I know you're a goose monster. <laughs> It's really only now that you're locking them up,、mm-hmm. but throughout the summer, they're just they're loose. They stay close to their, their the house feed and their feed、yeah. source. But this is the first time of the year we've locked them in this little pen. Oh, they're all getting out. Oh, is that bad? They want to roam. They're like Bill's blabbing his mouth off. Make your break <laughs> for it now. They want to roam. They want to go back to that lake over there. So it's, you know, it's, it's a good way. There's a good future in this, I, I believe. Yeah. The chefs love them. Yeah, love everything that comes. Yeah, we've had really good success that way. All the whole foods we grow are getting blander. We know this every time we buy tomatoes or strawberries or chicken. They taste like cardboard. But what we don't ask so much is what about the fake flavorings? And they've gotten very powerful. We add them to soy milk, we add them to frozen pizza, to fast food. This is the, the chemical language of desire that makes food more delicious than it deserves to be. And that's how we have incentivized billions of people to eat food that they shouldn't eat. We gonna carve it? Yeah. There's these little things called Sour Patch Kids, and I love、oh. them. I don't think it tastes like the actual fruit, but they think it does. How do they put the. Put the mouth still、like、back together? Do, what they do is they analyze the, the chemicals in the fruit that make it taste fruity, and then they produce those in a factory. Yeah, I was right. We, tr- we try, you know, try have a. The odd treat, but not eat too much. That's always the question, right, guys?、Mm-hmm. And sometimes we don't always disagree on what is the right amount. <laughs> If I talk about natural flavor, 
people think, well, you're talking about flavor out there in nature, the flavor in an apple, but natural flavor, and you see it everywhere, you see it in granola bars, you see it in yogurt, is just as synthetic as artificial flavor, which is to say it comes from flavor factories, it's formulated by people with PhDs in organic chemistry. For some reason we think it's exciting and brilliant when a trendy chef does it, and it's somehow terrible and horrible when a food company does it. The way I see it, they are exactly the same things. They reduce food to its chemical constituents and then adulterate it. So a Dorito is note-to-note -note cuisine. Many artificial flavoring critics advocate for cooking and eating more natural foods. But what is a natural ingredient? Chemist Hervé Thies thinks that compounds are the food of tomorrow and that they're just as natural as anything else. Note by note cooking is very simple. Instead of using, of cooking with uh, vegetables, fruits, meat and fish and eggs, you use compounds and compounds with compounds, so you have small bottles of compounds, uh, powders, liquids, and so on, and you make the dish. Imagine that you cook, and you put some curry or some nutmeg. Okay, it's a powder with a lot of uh, 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 high intensity of flavors that you put in your pan in order to change the flavor. Generally, people don't make any problem with that. If instead of curry or nutmeg or, I don't know, uh, paprika, I can use a liquid, and I put a drop of this liquid, and I have the same results than the spices, I don't see the problem. And by the way, what are the chemicals that I propose to use? Water, <laughs> cellulose, starch, sugar. Carrots are full of sugar. By the way, the compounds that were extracted from the natural products are not safer. Imagine that you have, for example, ivy poison. <laughs> ivy poison, it's natural, but it's very dangerous. If you look at the dictionary, it is said that something is natural when it has not been transformed by human being. So our food today is mostly artificial. で、料理が、え、お客さんのところにきちっとベストな形で、え、お客さんのところにこう自分で実際に山に入って、そしてその食材が生えている姿ですね、を見る。そしたらその食材をどう盛り付けたらいいのかっていうことを自然が私に教えてくれます。ですから我々は実際に山に入って、その食材の命を立って、そしてその食材を生かすということをしていきます。それによって食材に対してすごくこう情っていうものがこう出てくるんですね。そうすると情が出てくると美味しく仕上げることができますよね。
<笑>あの食材だけで美味しいっていうものが、うん、だからその方が、えー、驚きはあります。If there was one thing I could change, I would make people more aware of the importance of flavor. I think if you buy real food, which is to say, don't, not the processed food with fake flavoring, but if you buy whole food and you just find the, the real food that's the most delicious, and I think your body does a good job of taking care of its own needs, and it does that through the way food tastes. So just let's make flavor a part of the food conversation. Perfect homemade bread is not just about finding the right ingredients. It's also about air and steam. When working air into a dough, tiny bubbles form inside of it. These bubbles then expand when the bread is baked, making for a much fluffier result. And when the dough is baked using steam, the moisture reacts with the surface of the dough, creating a perfect crisp and crackly golden crust. The crust protects the dough during the baking process, keeping the correct moisture. This makes the heart of the bread softer, fluffier, and far more tasty. The assistant ensures the right percentage of air in the dough, while the plus steam oven injects steam at exactly the right time in the baking process. A combination that makes for the same delicious baking results time and time again.